Even the blind can see that the contradictions between the West and the East are intensifying rapidly. The war in Ukraine and the Taiwan crisis are all the first glimmers of an impending global conflict. And so, as in the good old days, he who's stronger is right. Who has more powerful and sophisticated weapons, including aviation weapons? Who controls the sky controls the world. And who will control the sky? The sixth generation fighter, of course. We called this video, Russians Get Ready, NATO Tests Its Sixth Generation Fighter. But that's not exactly true. NATO is testing not one, but four Generation 6 fighters. And if we add the Japanese project, we can say that the US and its allies are testing five sixth generation fighters at once. In this video, we'll talk about the most advanced, in our opinion, sixth generation fighter project, the French German Spanish project Future Combat Air System, abbreviated FCAS. It would seem that the leader in the creation of the sixth generation fighter should be the United States. This country was the first in the world to put on the wing the fifth generation fighter F-22, or Raptor, which is still the most perfect machine in this class. The USA also created the F-35 Lightning II, the most mass-produced fifth generation fighter. But paradoxically, this does not allow the US to take a leading position in the development of the next generation of fighters. Too many financial, material, and human resources are taken up by debugging and modernization of these aircraft. In the US, there are two programs to modernize both the Predator and the Lightning. There's also a British program for the creation of a sixth generation fighter BAE Systems Tempest, in which Italian and Swedish companies take part besides British firms. But obviously, the two leading EU countries, Germany and France, can spend more money on the project and the French and Germans would have more experience in aircraft development. Japan has not produced a single combat aircraft in decades. Their fighter bomber F-2 is a deeply reworked version of the American F-16, so it'll take a lot of time and effort for them to bring their FX sixth generation fighter project to life. So what is the Franco-German-Spanish FCAS project and why is it considered the most advanced? But at the beginning, a small digression. Why do the Germans and French and the Spanish and the British and the Swedes and the Italians, plus the Japanese, spend billions of dollars trying to create their sixth generation fighters instead of going the tried and tested way? They do not join a joint project with the USA and then buy ready-made aircraft, as it's currently happening with the F-35 Lightning II. Certainly not to prove to the world that there's still great aviation powers. The reason's more prosaic, a basic fear of the future. Meanwhile, the Russians are already successfully testing their fifth-generation fighter, Su-57, and their fourth-generation fighters, two plus the Su-35, have long been confidently plying the skies. So the gears of the bureaucratic machine are crunching, and as a result, there are several national projects of sixth-generation fighters. But let us return to the FCAS project. The dynamics of its development are impressive. In April 2018, French Defense Minister Florence Parley and her German counterpart Ursula von der Leyen signed an agreement to begin work on the project of the future Franco-German Next Generation Fighter created within the framework of the Future Air Combat System, or the French Système de Combat Aérien de Futur. And already in the same 2018, on October 23rd at the Euronaval 2018 exhibition in Paris, the French company Dassault Aviation presented a mock-up of the sixth generation fighter. Externally, it was something between the American F-22 and the Russian Su-57. At the same time, the French boldly declared that the new fighter jet would be many times superior to the American F-35 and F-22 fighters as it would be controlled without the direct involvement of the pilot. On February 15, 2019, Spain joined the project. Each country appointed a national industry coordinator, Airbus for Germany, Indra for Spain, and Dassault for France. Then at the Le Bourget Air Show, which opened on June 17, 2019, a mock-up of a very different machine, similar to the YF-23 prototype, was shown. Recall that at the start of the US F-22 Raptor 5th generation fighter program, there were initially two prototypes. The YF-22, created by a team of Lockheed, Boeing, and General Dynamics, 
and YF-23, the brainchild of Northrop and McDonnell Douglas. Then the YF-22-1. Though by such a key requirement, providing cruising supersonic speed without using an afterburner, YF-23 won over the future F-22 Raptor. It showed Mach 1.8 and YF-22 only Mach 1.58, and that only on afterburner. Next to the prototype model of the Franco-German-Spanish fighter, there was a model of the so-called remote carrier, simply an unmanned aerial vehicle which will accompany the fighter. That is, the designers will implement the concept of a swarm, a fighter plus several UAVs that perform reconnaissance and strike functions. It should be noted that a similar concept has already been implemented by the Russians in their fifth-generation fighter Su-57. It is developed and is already being tested, the drone Su-70 created using stealth technology. But back to FCAS. Now its designers are leaning towards a manned version, not an unmanned one. The main argument is the impossibility of achieving satisfactory autonomy parameters in the 20 to 30 to 2040 years. As a result, the main layout concept of the program is a two-seat aircraft, the crew of which is represented by a pilot and a drone swarm operator. By this idea, the main load will be carried by inexpensive and simple unmanned mules equipped with sensors and weapons, as well as connected to secure information channels. It's interesting that this time, the new machine is designed not as a replacement for the Tornado, but as the successor to the already Typhoon. That is, it should appear in 2045. At the presentation, the new aircraft was called Trivoli New Fighter and left in a two-seat configuration. The highlights of the new fighter should become a new system of reconnaissance, surveillance, and reconnaissance, ISR, intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance, and also communication equipment with the pseudo-satellites. HASP, High Altitude Pseudo-Satellite Type Zephyr, HASP is designed to provide information to the fighter from its airborne radars, scanning the battlefield from high altitudes. Also, the developers are working on a variant to create a transport aircraft which will carry in its womb reconnaissance and attack UAVs. This equipment will be used in case of the fighter's collision with a serious enemy's air defense system. To suppress it, the drones will be on the mentioned scheme, swarm together with the fighter, which will lead to the overall coordination of the action. Some drones from the swarm will be engaged in electronic warfare while the other will directly hit the air defense facilities, clearing the way for manned vehicles. The developer did not forget about the long-range airborne early warning and control aircraft based on the A330, which in this case plays the role of an Astrobus-based satellite signal repeater. A consortium of the French Safran Group and Germany's MTU Aero Engines will develop the engine for the new aircraft. Safran will design and integrate the engine, as well as build the combustion chamber, high-pressure turbine, and afterburner. In turn, MTU Aero Engines will build the low- and high-pressure compressors and the low-pressure turbine. The joint venture Aerospace Embedded Solutions, which includes specialists from Safran and MTU, will create the engine's electronic control system. The engine should provide the aircraft with a cruising supersonic speed that is supersonic without an afterburner. In short, the new aircraft should have all the necessary things, low visibility, supersonic as a cruising mode, and the presence of drone sensors going ahead. What about weapons? The hypersonic rockets with air jet propulsion developed as part of the French ASN-4G project are supposed to be used as the main weapon. Drones are expected to carry laser-guided decoy air bombs similar to the American GBU-53 ammunition. However, the range of the drones may be insufficient to destroy the target. In addition, their low speed and low maneuverability make them an easy target. Another option is to equip the drone with small missiles, like the 50-kilogram British Brimstone II missile with a range of 60 kilometers and supersonic speed thanks to its rocket engine. The first flight of the French-German-Spanish sixth-generation fighter is scheduled for 2027, and commissioning is scheduled for 2040. It should replace the current French Rafale, German Typhoon, and Spanish EF-18 Hornet. Well, let's see whether these countries will be able to accomplish this ambitious project in the planned time frame, or again, they'll have to ask for help from the US to have a modern aircraft capable of fighting on equal terms with the combat machines of Russia and possibly China. What do you think of the French-German-Spanish sixth-generation fighter? Write about it in the comments below.
If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a like and support our channel with your subscription. There will be many more videos about interesting weapons innovations to come.